Okay, so we'll start by going to GitHub and search for anycom15 forward slash plut. Here you'll find the repository for the Python script. It's just a script, so we'll go ahead and switch to the terminal and uh, clone the GitHub repository. So that clones a plut into the local directory, change into the plut directory, lists the files here. Um, you'll find more information in the readme. The plut.py is the main script. i.cube is the identity let for sRGB monitors. If your monitor is different or if you want to use an exact profile of your monitor, um, you'll want to use uh, a different let for those purposes. On the, on the other hand, you could also change the plet script directly. So I'll tell you how to do that. Um, so let's look at this plet script. Here you have the phosphors. So the phosphors variable you see here is the input. Um, this is the input file, or I'm sorry, the input variables, and these are your, out set, uh, your output files. So p1.cube, p2.cube, p3.cube, p4.cube are the defaults. So create uh, four output files. Um, and following the output file are the x and y coordinates for the um, chromaticity coordinates. So um, the default input is four output files with four different sets of chromaticity coordinates. And these chromaticity coordinates correspond to four phosphors Phosphor is P1, Phosphor P2, Phosphor 3, P3, and Phosphor P4. The second thing you might want to consider changing is this matrix here, XYZ to sRGB. This is the uh, this transforms a color from XYZ coordinates to sRGB coordinates. And keep in mind this is distinct from the um, XY chromaticity coordinates, we refer to those as lowercase xy. This xyz is in uppercase, uh, so it's a different space. Um, so if you're using a different kind of monitor from sRGB, then you'll want to replace this matrix with whatever xyz to RGB matrix you have for that monitor to get the right values. Uh, but for most cases, sRGB will be fine. So you can leave that as is. Um, uh, so another thing you might want to change are your gamma functions. These gamma functions, this gamma and this linear function is specifically for sRGB. So you may want to change that if you're doing something different. Um, and then uh, here we have main. Uh, under main is this, this gain, uh, under the gain comment up until this four line here. Uh, so this calculates a gain to apply to all the output values. You may want to remove this if you don't want that. The reason I put this in here is because um, when you transform the color to a specific grayscale at some chromaticity coordinate, uh, which is what the script does, you may go outside um, a y value, or not necessarily a y value, but you, you, you may go outside uh, an individual RGB value which is greater than one. Um, so to avoid this, I calculated um, the maximum RGB value that we would get for a given y value of one, which is uh, not, not the maximum y value necessarily, but it's supposed to represent the luminance the maximum luminance of white uh, uh, that the monitor is set to. Okay, so most most monitors have a fixed black point. They have a variable white point, and so since you can set the white point to whatever you want, uh, it doesn't really matter what um, this this you know value represents. So we can scale that down so that we don't clip um, we we don't clip and we don't lose dynamic range on the on the high end. I don't do that for the black level because um, I don't want to lose too much contrast. And the color variation that you would see due to clipping at the black value is not as significant 
as what you would see at the uh, at the white at the white um, side, the white level. So so I have this gain parameter in there. You can remove it if you want to clip the values. Keep in mind that if you do that, the grayscale ramp. If you look at a grayscale ramp, you'll see more banding. Uh, so by having this Y gain in there, you uh, it reduces the banding. It reduces the the color um, color casting that you get when you clip uh, the the values. Okay, so that's pretty much it as far as gain goes. You'll see that there are some output, uh, some things written to standard error for informational purposes. Um, so the way you use this program, I'll show you, is you can just run as a script, uh, just to show that the shebang line is for Debian specifically. Um, your environment might have, need, require a different shebang line, uh, but you should always use Python 3. Um, so you just type the script here, the imp, you put in the input LUT, uh, for example, the identity LUT as standard input. Um, and then it will, it's, or just hit enter, and it will tell you which output file it's currently working on. The gain that is applied to all of the values um, of the output files and the minimum and maximum RGB value that was written. So let's take a look at one of these output files. So you see here it starts at zero, and then it you know has a bunch of values, and some of them go below zero. That's because the color that we asked for is outside of the gamut of our typical sRGB monitor. Uh, so for our purposes, I don't change this domain min and domain max. Um, for using the, the software to, to apply the LUT, it doesn't affect it. It may affect other LUT applications, so just keep that in mind. It does not change the domain min and domain max that you see in the in the LUT here. Uh, so you, you may want to adjust that. So our LUTs are generated, so um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to actually apply this to, to the monitor itself. So going back to our desktop here, um, I'll go ahead and so if you just search for DWN LUT, sorry, I had to go back to the home page. Just search for DWM LUT, and um, you'll find this program DWN LUT, and you can just get the binary. So here's a download. 3.8 is the current version. Download this release.zip for Windows. Um, and so I already downloaded it here. I'm going to go ahead and extract it to a folder. And it's a portable application, so you can just run that as is. Uh, you'll get this here. Um, so I need to go back to the terminal and, and make sure I have those LUTs and then find them. So we'll pick the P1. and click apply and ah, everything is green now. I don't actually know if uh, OBS will capture this. It's a little less green. So maybe I should explain. P1 is, um, P1 is the typical green screen and for sRGB, it pretty much just turns everything green, it uses the green channel entirely because it's so green that it just falls so outside the sRGB gamut that, you know, we can't really do anything but just make it green. Um, so that is the, the typical, you know, matrix green phosphor that's common in uh, uh, monochrome monitors. Um, P2 is a little bit less green, it's a little more blue, and that's the one that is common for oscilloscopes. Analog oscilloscopes, of course. And digital ones, I guess. Maybe some, some of the later digital ones. Um, this is the amber phosphor. It's a very nice color. And then P4, it was used for black and white televisions. And it has a kind of this cool gray color. 
Uh, as soon as you compare it to bright saturated colors, you realize it's more of a blue shade than, than white. Okay. So I hope you'll find that useful. Um, just keep in mind that once you click apply, it applies it to the desktop permanently. Um, if you, if you close this, it's still going to be applied. If you minimize this, it hides it from the taskbar, but it still runs in the background. Um, so if you, if you shut it down, I'm not sure what exactly happens if, if it starts to come back on its own, because this program sort of hacks into DWM to apply these LUTs. Um, it's kind of going beyond the functionality that's intended of Windows in order to do that. But I think it has a really nice effect. And I think this application is very useful just for testing any kind of LUT in general, not just mine. Um, so I, I hope you enjoy this application. I hope it gives you some value. And you know, feel free to um, comment. And all the download links are in the, in the description. Mm -hmm.